And then I would call on Supervisor Roser to please come forward for the invocation. I'd ask the body to please rise for that and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, would you join me in prayer? Our Father in heaven, thank you for the beauty of this day and for our many blessings. Help us to be forever grateful. We pray for wisdom over this governing body today and for all those who will participate in this meeting. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. We also ask your protection for the men and women who serve our country in the military, as well as the police officers who serve with courage and integrity across our nation. Thank you for your mercy and grace, and especially for our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and thank you for everybody's attendance today. Uh, under its, well, first of all, we have the minutes from the previous session. Can I have a motion by Hamilton, a second by Nelson? Uh, any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Under excusal today, we have Supervisors Mahan and Fire. Resignations, we have none. Appointments, we have none today. And under reappointments, without objection from this board, I will take all of these at once to the Wood County State Wildlife Area Advisory Committee. We have George Bartels, Jim Winkler, and John Kibishek and to the Health and Human Services Committee as their citizen member for a three-year term, Jessica uh, Vicente. Is that right? All right, motion to approve by Bry, a second by Hocam. Any discussion? All in favor of those reappointments, please signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? And those carried. Now to thank those citizen volunteers for their service to the county. Some of these have served for quite some period of time. And I wish good luck to the new month. So, all right, we have long-term employee recognition today, and those long-term employees are the backbone of our workforce. I think we have about three departments today that will be making those presentations. You know what, under public, back up. I think I'll do this first, actually. Let's do the, um, let's see how I want to handle this here. I'm gonna go to public comments first. And under public comments, I'm gonna invite Michelle. Mark, if you go to the microphone, Michelle, and do the introduction for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Press the button. Press the button. Reset. I don't see a button. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, awesome. Well, good morning. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Michelle Bornke from UW Marshall Wood County. I'm the Assistant Dean there of Administrative Services. And I'd like to um, welcome our and introduce our interim Dean, um, Keith Montgomery. And he will be our interim starting July 6th at UW Marshall Wood County. And he is the Dean at UW Marathon County. So if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, as uh, Michelle said, I'm the campus dean at UW uh, Marathon County in Warsaw. I've been the campus dean for the last uh, three years. Uh, I've lived in Warsaw for the last 25 years. I was a faculty member before I was dean. Uh, I, when uh, Pat Stewart retires on uh, July 5th, I will become the interim dean on July 6th, and I'll be the interim dean for uh, an interim period until a new dean can be appointed uh, to the position. I'm really excited about this. I'll be splitting my time 50-50 between Warsaw and Marshfield. Uh, I think the Marshfield Wood County campus is a great campus. I think it's a campus that really seizes opportunities, takes advantages of, of where it finds itself. And I think there's some lessons I can take back to Warsaw from that campus. So I'm really excited, looking forward to it, and I hope to have a good working relationship with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any topic that's pertinent to 
anything the county board will be handling today or in the near future. So at this time, if you have any public comment, if you go up to the microphone, introduce yourself, state your name, uh, and you have three minutes. So is there, I see we have a lot of public here today. Is there any public comment? Come on. You guys can just come on up as, as long as I'm the in whatever order you would like. As long as I'm the closest to the microphone, my name is Cecilia Stelzer Johnson. Uh, I am on the county line between uh, Wood and Portage, and I'm very concerned about the quality of the water. And I'm very pleased to see that uh, you're tackling groundwater protection. So I hope that uh, we're going to be able to come to terms with that and get uh, good water for everybody, not just people that have a lot of money. Um, and it is important for everybody, really, to be able to resolve that. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Arnold Mansell. I'm from the village of Villador. And I'm the team leader for the Villador Area Groundwater Guardian Program. And I'm here to express my deep opinion on how valuable our groundwater resource is. And the reason that we started our Groundwater Guardian Program in 2003 was because, uh, if you remember back in the early 90s, the village of Milador had a real problem with benzene in their water. And we were forced to uh, provide a municipal water system. And in order to find water, our wells were located a mile and a half out of the village. So we worked with the farmers in the area. We have wellhead protection. And my son, when he was in high school in 2003, he was over at the university in Stevens Point for ecology seminar. <coughs> and he brought back a packet on the Groundwater Guardian Program. It's a national organization. And I looked at it, and I laid it on the desk and sat there for about a week. And I looked at it again, and I brought it up at the board meeting that it would be a good program to start. And they said, yeah, it looks good, but you got to run it. So <laughs> here I am. <clears throat> but uh, what we do, we work closely with uh, great schools, we provide education for kids. Uh, we try to start young because the old people, they don't care. You know, they're set in their ways and uh, we work with the young kids. We do performances. There is one other uh, group in Wood County, the Marshall uh, Groundwater Guardian Program. It's an excellent program and we work close with them. Uh, we, we work with them on their pharmaceutical pickup program and clean, we work clean sweep. Uh, so I just want to stress the importance of protecting your groundwater and that's what we do with the young kids when uh, we go into schools. Well sampling, very important. Uh, people that have wells, I don't know how many really sample, but uh, it can really hurt you. We had a, uh, our group also consists of the town of Old Plain and the town of Milbar because our wells are located a half mile from the town of Old Plain and they're in the town of Milbar. So uh, Supervisor Bob Ashbeck, he was the town supervisor at the time, so he joined our club, our, our group. And um, we got the town chairman from the town of Oakley. Uh, other than that, uh, it's, it's kind of an enjoyable experience for me. I get to work with a lot of people, a lot of good people. The kids are great. Uh, I'm also a state certified water operator. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just stop you one second. If the, we're at about three and a half minutes. Does the board want to yield more time on this particular? Am I getting a lot ahead? Nodding yes, no? No. We'll give you another minute at least, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm also a state water, uh, state certified operator. And our first project with the National Groundwater Foundation, you have to do a project every year. And we 
started well abandonment. I contacted the DNR and they gave me a list of wells in our area that they tried to abandon. But the people wouldn't work with them, but they worked with us. And we got funding through Wood County Land Conservation. Jerry Stork was, was in there. So we got up to like 70% funding. So these people were really happy. Uh, other than that, I guess that's about all I, I got to say right now. But uh, one, one other thing that's interesting is the pharmaceutical pickup. Uh, Kathy Lotzer runs the group in Marsh Hills. She does an excellent job. <coughs> And they actually Marshfield Group started the, the pharmaceutical pickup in the state. They were the first ones. And we help sort uh, drugs. And our last sort for since May of 2006, the total was 7,870.6 pounds of drugs that have been collected. And that's just Marshfield. I don't know what, what they get from rabbits or whatever. So, But I just want to stress that uh, groundwater is important. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <coughs> sure had some water. Uh, my name is Brian Hammer from the township of Saratoga. First and foremost, I'm not here uh, representing the CAFO fighting group today. I am part of it, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here for clean water. I had uh, privy along with a few of my other fellow residents to sit in on the uh, committee meeting a month ago that actually pushed this resolution up to this floor. At the time, we all sat and we listened to, I believe it was the county board's attorney, give his take on just what kind of club a resolution or ordinance like this would have, being that most of our water laws are governed by Madison, and quite honestly, you can all look around. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to read a newspaper or the internet and see just what's happening to the water in this state. It's not happening at the state level. It really needs to happen at the county level. Governor Walker pushes for more, more rules and regulations being put forth from the state level versus the federal. I think he should also push forward that we govern our water in the state by county, not by state federal, or excuse me, state law. At the time, the attorney for Wood County, as the board members of that board picked his brain regarding just how much teeth this would have, he couldn't in real, he wasn't a favorable report, being that the laws in the state pretty much govern what we do as counties. Uh, when the vote was, to, but he could not, however, say with certainty because he said at the time that, that was not his area of expertise. In fact, he was actually involved with working and talking with <coughs> attorneys for the DNR to get more educated on the subject. Upon that, there was a vote taken. Everybody passed, uh, wanted the resolution to go forward, but one, his reason for voting no was because, quote, this is a lesson in, this is an exercise in futility. And I can sympathize with your, with your position. The problem is, is water regarding the protection of it should never be an exercise in futility regardless of what the higher ups are trying to do to it. Um, I implore you, Mr. Wagner, the rest of this board to take very seriously this water issue. It's not going away. Certain political circles, uh, so much of our economics and our, our environment has been politicized. We can't lump water in with climate change. So many people like to pretend that they're scientists and ignore climate change. Well, that's, that's a matter for another day. You can't ignore water. It's happening around the world. It's happening in our country. It's happening in our state. And as a matter of fact, come September, the very Pope, I'm not a very religious man, but the Pope is going to be putting out his, his take on man's total demolishment of the of God's creation, be it air and water. And uh, we all know what that report is going to say already. So I guess if the Pope, uh, the Pope believes it, I guess I'm asking that the county of Wood take this a little more seriously and give it a little more focus, attention, and acknowledgement than we've seen from you in the past. I appreciate it. Yeah, did you practice that? Because that's exactly three minutes. <laughs> Drinking water comes from our groundwater. 
adequate supplies of groundwater are critical to the health of all of us. We need to secure adequate supplies of groundwater that are of good quality and quantity. The state of Wisconsin already has more public water systems than any other state in the nation. In 2013, as a state, we used about 2.12 trillion gallons of water. A Wisconsin resident uses about an average of 55,100 gallons of water per year. All this information came from the state, let's see, from the um, Safe Water Drinking Act of Wisconsin. In looking up the water protection for the state of Wisconsin, I discovered that our state has many regulations protecting the safety, the quality, and the quantity of our drinking water, the purpose of which it is stated to protect the public health, which is our health. I ask, no, I urge that all of you as citizens of Wood County, the state of Wisconsin, support the resolution to support groundwater protection for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Christy Greeny um, from Wisconsin Rapids Township of Saratoga. And much like Brian Ham, I'm here speaking on behalf of myself and out in the Protect Wood County group that I'm also a member of. Um, I'm here really just to give a very short um, message, and that is a thank you and a kudos to the Judicial and Legislative Committee for seeing that groundwater protection is a serious issue, not only here in Wood County, but all of Wisconsin, and for bringing this resolution uh, to the front of your committee and passing it out of your committee and bringing it here in front of the Wood County Board um, in a very expedited manner. Um, I think it's very important, and I think we drag our feet a lot. Uh, both in this county and with other resolutions that have brought forward. And I absolutely appreciate the backbone of the Judicial and Legis Legislative Committee that have brought this forward. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Don Swanson. I'm a local resident very concerned about our health, environmental, and economic welfare. Clean water is of critical importance to every person living in or visiting the county. At this time, it seems that you, the board, are holding our precious clean groundwater in the very palm of your hands as the state has failed to enact adequate legislation to protect this irreplaceable resource. Every county resident would be absolutely devastated if we were faced with the horrors found in several other counties. Water from their kitchen faucets and bathroom faucets are not fit for human consumption. It can't be used for drinking, bathing, cooking, laundry, car washing, and the list goes on. This disaster is the result of counties failing to take adequate, timely action. <clears throat> I'm pleased with the groundwater protection resolution you will consider today. You will have my thanks and my congratulations if it is approved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Eleanor Terrell, and I'm from the town of Rome. I live on a man-made lake, and I'm just concerned about Wisconsin in general. Um, I've lived all over the world, and eventually came back to Wisconsin, and it's supposedly clean air and clean water and clean environment, <clears throat> and now I drive back and forth from Wisconsin Rapids area to the Madison area and my car windows are full of bugs. Um, unusual, I would drive in Montana and I'd get lots and lots of bugs in Montana, <clears throat> but not Wisconsin. But again, I'm on a man-made lake and I'm real concerned about the water and have seen and read about other places that are having major water issues. <coughs> and I think our water and my well could be impacted. So I'm just imploring you to do, keep doing your good job of bringing this forth and trying to act in the benefit of most citizens of Wisconsin and then in particular our area. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Paulette Sullivan. I am a resident of Saratoga and I'm asking you, make it short, I'm asking you please, please be proactive on this resolution. We need to have clean water in this area. We don't want our county, our beautiful Wood County to end up like Kiwani County or any of the other counties that have a terrible, terrible water problem. 
and we need our clean water. We have residents here that are that came to Wood County because we had such good water and such a beautiful area, and we wanted to stay that way. Please, please pass this resolution. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? Okay, I guess with that, we'll go to long-term employee recognition. I, I want to thank everybody for their comments this morning. So, um, so I think I have about three department heads back here that have some long-term employee recognition to and I would start with um, Kathy Redder. Kathy, are you back there? Kathy's director of our human services department, and I believe you have three or four. Four? Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> um, I have four long-term employees I wish to recognize. Yeah, I'm not sure the button on. I didn't push the button on that grade. Hello? Okay, thank you. This lit green, so I'm hoping it's us. <laughs> thank you, Trench. Uh, I have four long-term employees who unfortunately were unable to make it this morning, but I do want to recognize each one of them. They represent four of the seven divisions within Human Services. The first individual is Timothy McNaughton, who is a social worker in our Family Services Division. He works with Juvenile Justice in the Juvenile Justice Unit and works with some of our adolescents that get into trouble here in the county. He's been a long-term employee and he's a real asset in working with juveniles. Steven Weiler has been here for 25 years. He's a licensed professional counselor and he's a mental health therapist. Uh, provides clinical supervision to our staff. Has uh, worked up in the Marshfield area for uh, 25 years and has worked with individuals with severe and persistent mental illness in the community. Cheryl Beasley is another employee. She works in our support services division. She's a 30-year employee here in the county. She provides uh, assistance in maintaining medical records for clients over at the 12th Street office. She also backs up the reception area in our clinic and provides support there. Lastly, uh, I have Lisa Boyarski, who is a 30-year employee as well. She works in our Fiscal Services Division, and she does a lot of the billing that's done out of our 12th Street office. Her office is located here in the courthouse on the second floor. So um, we will make sure they get their plaques and recognize them within the department. Thank you. responding to emergencies, investigating accidents, uh, taking care of business on the road. John had been a member of our 
special response team, as well as many other individual things within, within the department, which he did a, a very good job at. Within the last several years, though, I think John really began to, uh, to grow and to, and to really develop. And what had happened during that time, we had a series of, of retirements. And through uh, some reorganization within our department, John became our civil process server. And what's, what's really extraordinary about that, in, in past administrations, civil process was handled in our department by between two and three officers countywide. And at that time, you know, it was uh, just a, an accepted fact that we needed to have uh, this number of officers serving these civil process papers throughout our county. Here's a guy that does the work of two or three people all by himself. He, he, he picks up the ball, he runs with it, does a great job. Um, you know, there's nothing ever to worry about when John's, when John's on the job because he's, he's going to get it done for you and, uh, and do a great job of it. So, I would, you know, it's a great honor for me to present, uh, to present John Anderson with a 30-year uh, service recognition award from Wood County. John, very proud of you, buddy. <laughs> to say something. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to uh, be a Wood County Sheriff's Deputy and to work with the people that I do. It's such a blessing for me to, to have this longevity. And on top of that, this is my hometown. And when I graduated high school and went on to a college to pursue education and criminal justice, my dream was always to come back to Wood County and, and serve the people I grew up with. I thank you very much. Next is Lieutenant Lee Geralds. Lee, could you come up? I'm presenting today, Lee, with a 40-year service recognition award. Uh, what more can you say? 40 years. Jerry Ford was president when this guy started. <laughs> uh, Lee, has been, Lee has been just a constant in our department for the, for the past several generations and has been really what, uh, you know, in thinking about what I was going to say about him, really has been like a big brother to so many individuals within our department. Uh, recently, he became uh, one of our, during reorganization once again, he became one of our new patrol lieutenants at our department. For many, many, many years, he had been a sergeant within, within the department, and at this point in his career, he was willing to step up and, and really, uh, really take a leadership role again in, uh, for the remainder of his career. And it's something that I'm, I'm very proud of uh, to, be, to be associated with him. Lee also does a number of other things that I think are really noteworthy. Uh, when the, in, in 2010, when the, uh, when the uh, Wisconsin Acts came, Act 10 came about, one of the things that I had suggested to, uh, to our deputies is that it, it, that it was very important at that time that we, that we show people that we care about communities. And this is something that I really pirated from Lee because Lee has done this his entire life. He's been totally dedicated to his alma mater, Pittsville High School, has served in coaching capacities, advisory capacities, anything they, they basically would ask him, uh, Lee has been willing to do. He's been a baseball coach there for many years, doing all the things that I really think that uh, public service is all about. You know, public service isn't about just putting a uniform on, coming to work for eight, for eight hours, punching the clock, and then going home and collecting your check. It's about serving the public. And it's about doing things you know, that, are, that are outside the norm and outside of, of maybe what some people might or some organizations might consider to be what your responsibility is. Lee does that. He steps outside of those norms and he, he takes care of his community and he's truly a public servant. Lee, if you could. Congratulations on your award. Extraordinarily proud of you, buddy. I guess the only thing I've got to say about 40 years is if you didn't like coming to work, you would still wouldn't be here. And uh, <laughs> I still like it. I'm still going to come to work. I enjoy it. I enjoy the community service I do in Pittsville. And one more community service tonight that I'll do for free is I'll 
coach my daughter's softball team and it sounds. Thank you very much. Thank you. We don't want you to show this. <laughs> you can put it up if you want. <laughs> Actually, the theory of relativity holds true with Lee. He's a, a cousin of mine. Um, I mean, the family is certainly proud of him. And his daughter, Lainey, is right in the back corner there, too. Um, this was taken um, during his uh, volunteer time, I guess, during the baseball season. If you know Pittsville High School, there's a pit right behind you know, where the ball, ball diamond is. And apparently, one of the big things is uh, belly flopping and sliding your butt all the way down that thing. <laughs> this is what our 40-year veteran of the Sheriff's Department is doing. <laughs> and the Wisconsin Association of Local Boards of Health held their uh, annual conference in the Dells several weeks ago, and Sue was uh, chosen to receive the Wisconsin Association of Local Health Departments and Boards 2015 Health Officer of the Year. So I'm going to ask Sue to come forward, and then I'm going to tell you just a little bit about why she was chosen to do this. Um, if you remember way, way back years ago, come over here and stand right now. Um, years and years ago, it seems like a hundred now, before uh, the referendum passed that cut our county board from 38 to 19 supervisors, we had a board of health. <laughs> and then with the county reorganization, uh, the board of health was put under the oversight of the Health and Human Services Committee. I was, um, privileged to serve as the chair of that Board of Health and uh, was able to participate in Sue's hiring, uh, which was just a real blessing. Janice Winters was our health officer. She'd been here for many years and she chose to retire. Uh, Sue is from this area, so she had a desire and left that little Pepin County to come over here and be our health officer. But <coughs> Sue has been very goal-oriented all of her life. Uh, Sue is a registered nurse, and so we have that camaraderie there. Um, my master's degree is from where she got her undergraduate degree, so we have that uh, in common. But I, when we interviewed Sue, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this woman is goal-oriented, because you have to have a master's degree to serve in a level three health department. And a level three health department has an environmental health component to it. And so years ago, Sue knew just where she wanted to go with that. And we just really, truly believed that her hire here was one of the best things that we ever did for Wood County. Sue has brought a passion for health. Sue has brought a passion for protecting the health of the people, the communities that she served. She has made contributions not only at the local, the state, but the national level. She has been recognized by a plethora of people across all of those governing entities and been appointed to committees that uh, are very wonderful to serve on because they have a direct impact on public policies. She has uh, created a culture within her health department where I think some of those people are going to be here 40 years because they love coming to work every morning. 
She has led the way with the culture of safety and the culture of wellness in our, um, within our county, and I've just been very proud to um, be a cohort of hers. She's worked in public health for the last 20 years, uh, been a local health officer for 17 of those, not just in Wood County, but in Pepin County, as I mentioned. She uh, has developed a culture that embraces change, encourages, encourages professional growth, strives to meet and exceed state and national standards. And one thing that I've also appreciated about her department is they haven't been selfish. They have done a lot of innovative things in their department, and then they've been willing to share those resources, not only across the state with other health departments, but across the nation. Uh, I was ch um, president of the uh, National Association of Local Boards of Health for a while, and the public health standards were the big thing when I was president of that organization. And so, even though Sue, of course, knew about all that, I came back and said, hey, we really need to do this because we're setting the standard across the nation. Um, I could read through all of this, but I'm just going to read the last sentence. She was obviously nominated by a lot of wonderful people, but one thing that I really appreciated in this um, letter was Sue models collaborative leadership through her interactions locally, regionally, and statewide. Sue shares information gained from outside organizations to benefit Wood County and other local health departments, which is kind of a reiteration of some things that I said. So she was awarded this at our, um, at the uh, a recent annual conference, and it reads this. Wisconsin Association of Local Health Departments and Boards awards the 2015 Health Officer of the Year to Sue Comferman, and I'm going to read this because I think it's very proud, RN, <laughs> MSN, which stands for Masters of Science in Nursing, and CPM, which is Certified Public Manager, presented at the WPHA, with, with, which is the Wisconsin Public Health Association, and the WALDAB Annual Conference in May of 2015. So join me in congratulating Sue, and uh, we're just praying that someday I can give you a 40-year award for being employed in Wood County for that many years. So congratulations. I'll just say a few words about how wonderful Wood County is. <laughs> can I have a question? Yeah. <laughs> and I was surprised and honored to receive this award and I feel blessed every day to work with a wonderful crew at the health department. We have an amazing team of people and I also feel blessed to wake up every morning and come to a job that I truly love after all of these years. So I don't know if I'll make 40. I think I would be about 73 by then, but you never know. The retirement age might be 80, so maybe I'll be 40. So thank you so much. <laughs> Unanticipated revenues from the DAD cap. 
The adjustment to the budget totals $78,179. You've heard the reading of the resolution. I have a motion by Wagner, a second by Hinkle. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion? If you would go to the board, please vote. That resolution passed unanimously. That takes us to page 16 of the packet, a second resolution from the executive committee. And as soon as the clerk gets sent there, I'll have her read that one. This will be resolution 15-6-2, tax deed eligible property. Authorize the tax deed of <laughs> property in compliance with section 75.14 Wisconsin statutes. Fiscal note, taxes um, 2010 through 2014, um, plus publication fees and tax deeding expen uh, expenses for a total of $6,563.47. Okay, looking for a motion not to approve by Hamilton, a second by Bride. Any discussion on this resolution? Okay, so now I ask you to vote again, please.
County Sheriff. Fiscal note as per resolution, total to be canceled, $819.08. And a motion by Hamilton. We got that and a second by Lightning. Any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion? Again, please vote. Resolution passed 17 to 0. Page 50 in your packet is the C committee minutes from June 3rd. Supervisor Hankel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to inform the county board and the public that in April, our longtime county conservationist, Jerry Stork, retired. And in a series of interviews, the seat committee has offered the position to another person who has taken that seat as of yesterday. It is a well-known person. It is Shane Wichterpen. Can I stand up a minute? There you are, back there. Congratulations, and I hope you're here for 40 more years. Seeing none, please vote. 
Again, that resolution passed unanimously. After the rest of those documents that you read, we're at page 99, which is a resolution brought forth by uh, the SEED and the Highway Infrastructure Committee. It's page 99 in the packet, and have the clerk read that resolution. This will be resolution 15-6-6. Support the efforts of Pavlesky Development, LLC, NEPCO Lake Development, LLC, and NEPCO Lake Owners Association, Inc. in the dredging and maintenance of NEPCO Lake and Four Mile Creek south of County Road Z for the improvement of recreation, navigability, access, and overall water quality. No fiscal note. Okay. I have a motion by Nelson, second by Hinkle. Any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion? Please vote. And that resolution will pass unanimously. Um, page 100 was just an attachment of where that dragging was actually going to occur. Page 101 in your packet, minutes of the Judicial Legislative Committee of May 13th, as well as page 102. Page 103 is an attendance sheet. Page 104 in the packet is minutes of the same committee from June 2nd, and that's 104, 105, and 106. Again, an attendance sheet on 107 from the Judicial Legislative Committee of 6-2. Goes on to 108. We have the Joint Legislative Committee meeting from March 16th on pages 109 to 111. 109 to 111. On page 112 in your package, you have uh, Pete Kasten holds our court counsel's update or his memorandum that came out, and that's 112. In 113, probably a lot of good points in here and something that's gotten board members, which probably should make sure we all read. Page 114 in your packet um, and 115 are two sheets that keep me informed of where Chairman Condetti is every month, and that's probably good to have. <laughs> Page 116 in the packet is another uh, monthly report to the committee from uh, Corp. Council Kastenholz, that's page 116. Page 117 is the monthly update from the Child Support Agency. Uh, on the next page is 118, and we have a notice of injury and claim. And then on page 19, we have a resolution from the Judicial and Legislative Committee. And before they start this, because I may speak to this one, I am going to turn the gavel over to the Vice Chairman. Minor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That brings us to page 119 and uh, item number 5-1, a uh, resolution from the Judicial and Legislative Committee. I would ask the clerk to please read that resolution. This will be resolution 15-6-7 to direct the Corporation Council to work with other county staff and a committee member to develop a draft groundwater protection ordinance for Wood County for presentation to the county board next month. Uh, no fiscal note. I have a motion by Supervisor Clendenning, a second by Supervisor Zerflu. With that, we'll open discussion. Any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion on this resolution? Supervisor Wagner. Uh, thank you, Vice Chairman. The, uh, uh, I had the distinct honor of being called out during the public comments today. Which is, uh, that's something that hasn't happened to me since I was a legislative aide. I was, uh, I was supporting uh, repealing the blue laws in a certain county in Florida and allowing the bars in the county to serve alcohol on Sunday. In that case, I was called out from the pulpit of the First Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't too much different. So, the, the problem is, I, I listened to the folks who came up and, and talked in favor of this ordinance. And believe me, I understand what you're saying. That there isn't, I don't think there is one supervisor in this room that wants to foul the waters of Wood County. There isn't one supervisor in this room 
who doesn't want to protect our legacy for our children? Not one of us. The pity is this resolution won't do any of that. That's the pity. The one of the gentlemen who spoke, I think the same one called me out, uh, made the comment that he listened to the corporate counsel's uh, the explanation of what authority the county had and what authority was reserved to the state. And he made a very good point. He made an excellent point. We don't have the authority to do much more than what we've already got on the books. It's already there, what we can do. We can go after sources of pollution, and we have to follow what the state tells us we can do in stopping that pollution. We can do that. There is nothing that can be done. And let, let's, let's, let's be very honest here. Let's be very honest. This resolution is not going to stop a CAFO. It's not. You may have elected officials who tell you they are. It's not. I feel for you. I understand where you're at. We have a soil and water kind of, a soil conservation department who can enforce those laws. We have a seed committee that can oversee it and keep it going. This ordinance is what I said in the committee meeting. It is futile. It's unenforceable. It cannot be enforced. Well, let's put it this way. The, the resolution only creates a committee to create an ordinance which will be futile. So this is several steps removed. So if your expectations, if you come here today and want to walk out here cheering that you say Wood County's water forever, it's not here. It's not in this ordinance. It's not in this resolution. And it's not in this ordinance. Believe me, it pains me to have to say that, but I have an oath that I took that I will uphold the laws of the, of the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin and the ordinances of Wood County, and I'm not going to violate any of that by assuming powers that we do not have. Thank you. Further discussion from supervisors. I have saw Supervisor Hinkle, then Rosar, then Lytle. Supervisor Hinkle, please. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I am on a private well. I am very concerned about water. I have been serving on state commissions on um, environment and chaired the seat committee for years. I don't want our water messed up. This resolution is not the way to go about it, and what it proposes is even further from the effective way of doing it. Um, many, many of you don't know, this is the 800th anniversary of the signing of the Magna Carta this week. 650 years ago, a very important phrase got inserted in some of those documents. It's called due process of law. We have a due process of law to create good legislation. Hasty, hurried legislation is inevitably bad legislation, inevitably needs to be fixed. Even if we have the authority, the concept of coming up with a start from the, the basics and go ahead and write an ordinance that would be effective in one month is faulty. It will not work. That wouldn't even allow time for public hearings on it. The second issue that I have with this thing is that the oversight committee for the, the health department is not a co-sponsor. This was brought not from the health department, but from judicial. That's not the way it should work. It's the people who actually have to write and, enfor and enforce these things that have to participate in the long and careful crafting of a good ordinance. It's the policy decision of the health department or the health and human services oversight committee that has to make this kind of change. This is not, not the way to go. It, it, it's just wrong. I can't support it, and I don't think any supervisor that really understands their, their oath of doing things under the Constitution and for the best interests of this county would go forward this way. I think it is a very good idea to try and protect our groundwater with additional um, 
either ordinances or act programs, but this is not the way to do it. Supervisor Rosar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I'm standing in opposition of this ordinance, and I would like to re not really reiterate, but just say that I agree with many of the things, if not most of the things, that Supervisor Wagner and Supervisor Hinkle just um, said. As chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, with oversight over the Health Department, I can tell you that we talk a lot about clean water. We do not want water that causes death or disease. And if you look at the major things that public health has done over the last 100 years, cleaning up our water supply has been one of those things. People used to die of diseases. And the health department and public health in general sees that responsibility and pursues it with passion because we don't want to go back to those days where people were dying or getting sick from bad health water. We've talked about this in um, our waste irrigation committee, and we do believe that we have an ordinance in place. We've talked a little bit about what we might be able to do to strengthen that ordinance. We have a passionate environmental health supervisor and health officer that diligently work on providing a safe water supply for this county. The other thing that I would like to do is to springboard on something that Supervisor Hinkle said. Um, in Rule 29 of our Board of Supervisors, there is a sentence in there that says, the appointment of an employee to assist any committee in gathering data for that committee shall be allowed with the approval of the committee which oversees the employee. This resolution says that the health officer and the environmental health supervisor would be on that committee. They cannot do that without the permission of the oversight committee. And I cannot guarantee that the Health and Human Services Committee would grant permission to um, the creation of this document. Um, the process is all wrong. <laughs> I, I, the process is wrong. I've been on this county board for many years. We have worked with the committee system, and it has worked well. And it has only been in the past few years that rogue committee members have not gone to the appropriate oversight committee to bring issues before this board, and it breaks my heart that we are destroying the way this county board has worked for years and years. I will not be supporting this for a variety of reasons, which I have just iterated, and I would encourage um, supervisors not to support this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Lightham. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I'll, I'll try to keep some of the emotion out of this, although it's not, not easy to do. Um, maybe if we look at this from a little bit different element, that being economic development, I think we always look at economic development, but I come from Abbotsford, a little town up on the on the Marathon County Clark, or the Clark uh, Marathon County line. You're probably familiar with Abbeyland Meats. Well, Abbotsford has always had a water problem, a water issue. And I'm just wondering how much that, that industry was stymied by the fact they couldn't get water. Um, it was looked at that maybe a pipe from Marathon City to Abbotsford, which would be about 25, 30 miles would be the answer. Brad sitting beside me here knows that at one point in time, the uh, city of Nakusa was looking for water. Strangely enough, from the town of Saratoga, uh, that pipe went underneath the, the bridge at Nakusa. Economic development, not only health, but economic development requires clean water. We've heard our health committee talk about the importance of clean water. They would very much like to be part of this effort. Um, I guess I'll rest my case there, but clean water, we are 70% water. This earth is 70% water. We need clean water, unpolluted clean water. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Further discussion by supervisors? Supervisor Zerflo. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I'm proud of myself for remembering to say thank you finally when I rise. Um, as a moderate, I guess uh, I can see the issues on both sides. However, A, I'm just voting for a resolution to bring this to the county floor so it can be discussed. Uh, taking a page out of your book, Mr. Vice Chair. And secondly, my humble opinion, being a law enforcement officer for 37 years, I am not violating my oath to the county by supporting this resolution. Uh, in my understanding of Rule 29, and the Corporation Council is sitting behind me, um, I, I am not opposing that issue either. It is just my humble opinion. And I rise to support this, basically for no other reason to give the people their day in court, so to speak. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I had Supervisor Ashbeck, then Chairman Plummel. Supervisor Ashbeck, please. Can you hear me now? <laughs> you have to push down the tree, the green line. Here. I have to compliment on Mr. Manifold's remarks because he talked about different avenues here. We're always, uh, we have different avenues. I all advocate of closing these old, these old wells in the country because we have many of them out there that are, that are main source of the groundwater pollution. Then I see snowbanks in the city streets. How, how soon do we clean the debris up after the snow is melted? Or is this water going down the storm sewer? I see the village of Miller, the gutters and that are full of leaves until maybe a first rainfall, you know. Stuff like this we have to put our handle on too. I mean, not we can't all concentrate just on the town of Sorrow. We have our whole problem right around home that we are to look into more. So. Okay, thank you. Chairman Plummel. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, I guess to everybody's point, there's nobody that opposes you know, clean water, fresh air. Um, you know, those are two things that obviously we need. But I think Mr. Wagner probably stated it extremely eloquently. The hardest thing to do oftentimes is to look those constituents, those people you live with, uh, in the face or in the eye, and tell them the tough truth. And I, and I think that's what he was trying to say is the resolution as presented doesn't do that. Um, there's mechanisms that we have in the county to bring these resolutions forward. Uh, there's committees they should come through. I had a meeting the other day right after a regional legislative meeting where I walked out and part of the, the there's a process to everything. There's a committee process within the county um, and then there's also the state legislature and, and I was kind of told in no uncertain terms that it had nothing to do with this particular uh, resolution. But when we pass, I'll call them somewhat irresponsible resolutions that fly in the face of state statute um, or don't allow for the process to proceed slowly at times, which it does, but slow doesn't make it bad. Slow sometimes makes it better. Uh, we tend to be usurped by the state. And, and basically what that particular legislator said to me was, when irresponsible resolutions or ordinances are passed, uh, the state tends to usurp local control and take total control of the situation. I think we have those protections in place here. I don't mind if we strengthen those uh, particular protections. And I don't mind that this comes through the proper committee to do that. Um, and I should never mention supervisors' names, but I think Supervisor Hinkle also said that there's no way by July you know, through the public hearing process, uh, through vetting the whole issue, through getting the input, that we could possibly do that. And then there comes the, the point on Rule 29, where without oversight, without concern for what uh, cost may be involved, staff may be involved in priority of issues in front of us today, uh, I don't know how we handle this on such short notice. So on this particular resolution, I would be opposing it. But I can tell you going forward, I wouldn't be opposed if something came out of a particular committee that dealt with the issue to handle this going forward or to further strengthen those uh, issues. Thank you. Further discussion, Supervisor Clendenning, then Supervisor Rosa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The resolution is basically Rule 29. It says the county board is going to do that. 
and the county board supervisors that are here that are on these particular committees will be voting today. I just, since one of the supervisors indicated that that committee would have to pick them, I probably, never mind, I'm not going to go there. Anyways, I would like to make a, an amendment to the motion, to the resolution, and that is to, to cancel out the the July, the, the July meeting and move it to the August meeting of the Wood County Board. That is a motion. I have a motion by Lynn Denning. Do I have a second to that motion by Leitner? To, in the, I'm, I think I'm seeing it in the now therefore be resolved paragraph that the order, everything stays the same except the last two, or the last, the second the last word would be August 2015. Am I correct, Mr. Clendenny? Yes. Okay, I have a motion to second on the floor. Is there any discussion on that amendment? Discussion on that amendment. Let's go to the board, please. And please vote on the board. Supervisor, there we go. That res or that amendment does pass ten to seven. So it is we are dealing with an amended resolution to move it from July 2015 to August 2015. Further discussion on the amended resolution. Supervisor Rosar and then Supervisor Nelson. Um, thank you, sir. I uh, I want to know if it is it appropriate to ask a question because I, I have a question. Uh, number one, am I interpreting Rule 29 appropriately when it says that participation by staff members have to be approved by their oversight committee? And then that's my first question. And then my second question is, what happens if the oversight committee does not approve the participation of the Wood County Public Health Department Director and the Wood County Supervisor of the Environmental Health and Communicable Disease? That sounds like a legal question. I will refer to Corporation Council Castanholtz, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, so we do have Rule 29, and it, it reads as was read uh, earlier, and that it does require a oversight committee to approve involvement on matters uh, pertaining to their staff, but you also have the ability of the county board if it wants to waive that rule since it's come up. Um, and so, if I could just elaborate a little bit on this. Carry forward. There's often times for Keep getting a red light. Just like I'm driving my sports car, it's always a red light. <laughs> so anyway, um, there we have that rule, um, and it's been there for a while, and yet we often have uh, projects that involve different departments. Um, and we've had that going on in this particular area as well. And we don't necessarily get specific approval by our oversight committee uh, to work on matters pertaining to other departments. When you have an internal servicing department like mine or uh, HR, finance, I mean, that's just the nature of it and that's part of what we do. But when you have other departments, sometimes they work together, um, health, uh, land conservation, sometimes they don't. But if there's a need to do so, they will usually want to do so and don't go to their oversight committees to get that approval. And so that's why I didn't write it in to this resolution, which I, I wrote up to waive that particular county board rule, because I'm assuming, possibly incorrectly, that health department director would probably want to be involved in, in, to some extent with her staff in seeing what's going on with regards to this issue. It is a hotly political issue for a number of reasons that have been expressed already. So if in fact the health director 
uh, didn't want to do that and said she wanted to go to her oversight committee. Um, she had that ability, but dealing, knowing that in advance now, um, the resolution could be amended to waive that rule as well because the county board, um, of course, controls its own rules and this is just a rule of the county board. Uh, arguably, if, if you pass the resolutions directing that this happen, that would arguably overcome the rule anyway because the county board again is making that decision. So I'm sorry for putting you in that predicament to even have to address the issue. I should have seen that earlier on. It's just that a lot of departments were already involved in this issue and, and trying to work collegially in regards to helping out with regards to the issue. So I tend to muddy the water sometimes when I'm answering questions, but I muddy the water bad. Um, but in any event, I no. apologize no for that. Um, no, 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 no. I hope that answers the question. And it does. It does. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Nelson, I believe you're next. Well, I don't know if it's appropriate now with the discussion, but I was going to recommend that the health department be part of the uh, August or, or the uh, seat committee, uh, or the seat committee, the uh, <coughs> judicial committee in discussing this. And we get as much expertise as we can to get this resolved without any further uh, disagreements or disharmony. And from what Mr. Uh, our illustrious attorney has stated, uh, I guess there is no problem in asking the health department to step in and give us a hand in getting this resolved. Thank you. Further discussion? Supervisor Hinkle. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I would like to point out that the experience of planning and zoning, which I've been a part of for 16 years in the Oversight Committee, has been that it takes a very long time to put together an ordinance. Ordinances should have input from a whole bunch of experts. They should be hashed over carefully to make sure that every possible uh, contingency is considered. And even in planning and zoning, they are usually based on a model from the state or the federal agencies. In this state, in this particular instance, there's only one other county that has a water protection ordinance, and it's not based on the health ordinances. It's based on geology. I, this is in, totally impractical. Impractical that something useful would come out in even two months. Further discussion? Uh, I'll go to Supervisor Wagner and then back to Chairman Plimmel. Supervisor Wagner, please. Thank you. I, I think that, that amendment uh, that was just passed was uh, sort of dragging us off the track as far as I'm concerned, as far as I can see, as far as I could see the issue. The issue is, do, can we do anything that is more stringent than what's already on the books for Wood County or in the state staff or what the state statutes allow us to do? The answer to that is no. We just passed an ordinance saying instead of rushing it through in one month, instead of rushing it through an ordinance that's now enforceable in one month, we're going to rush it through in two months. That's sort of like, you know, why do we do something like that? You know, I, I can't believe that. The issue is, are we doing something that's effective? One of the things that the, uh, the ad hoc committee on spray waste that looked at and found as a relatively promising avenue was some kind of a liaison between the health department and the soil uh, conservation services that would address issues of public health as they pertain to air, water, uh, and uh, bacteria and uh, airborne, airborne pathogens. That's something we could work on internally, something we could do. And, but basically, what we would do is work out the liaison to handle those three issues in tandem. Not, the, not, we would not necessarily would even need an ordinance to do that. Just basically a set of policies on how we do it. And we could work with the existing state, uh, state rules. We could work with the existing county rules. But now we're going to create an ordinance. And, and I think that um, Supervisor uh, uh, Hinkle made the comment about another county having one that, where they tried to do this too, they tried to pass a public health ordinance. And basically, the only thing they ended up doing was restating 
the state statutes and then adding something that was peculiar to that community or to that particular county saying that they had to have 20 feet of sand before they could, could go into a well. We don't have that same problem. That, that's not the same problem that we've got. They tried doing what you're doing and failed. They tried to do what you're trying to do and failed. Let that sink in for a second. I'm urging you to vote against this. Thank you. Chairman Plimmel. Again, you know, somewhat of a reiteration. In this particular resolution, you know, the first, second, and third layer as I have absolutely no problem with. You know, clean water, groundwater is one of the most important issues of Wood County. But in our county, we have a system that works. Uh, we're recognized around the state for that process. Um, I would just like to see if, if we're going to proceed down this path that we do it through the proper committees in the proper way. It could take six months. It could take seven months. But you need to have that input from those people who deal with this on a daily basis. And, and rushing forward like this, my concern always is, I'll call it the unintended consequence. You can say that's an unfounded fear. But I've seen it as I have worked on other issues at the state level where if we do something that circumvents state statute or contravenes what they're trying to do, we get stepped on much harder than we would if we drafted or crafted a very well thought out uh, ordinance and or process. So I too will not support this resolution as it stands, but again, I would not stand in the way of those committees who deal with this work in the future. Supervisor Rosar. Um, as chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, Sue and I have already talked about this, and we are putting this on a future agenda to talk about it in light of the current ordinances that are already here. So I want you to know that at the appropriate committee level, we are discussing this, and we are talking about the possibility of strengthening a current ordinance, or how can we work to enforce what we've got. I'd also like to uh, advocate on behalf of just the workload. Um, Sue's, Sue's department's very busy protecting the health of the uh, citizens of Wood County. And to add something that they're going to have to spend hours working on that only is going to be unenforceable and not contributing to the conversation just seems like an awful waste of their valuable time over there. And so I'm just advocating for the use of their time and um, asking you to respect how much work they have to do and to not have to work on something that's going to be fruitless. Thank you. Supervisor Hendler. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Your Honor. I'm just trying to lighten it up a little bit, that's all. Um, I, I can't support this particular resolution. I, I think we're going down a very cumbersome path, legalistic path. You, you can't begin to realize what uh, this means to our corporate counsel and perhaps additional costs from outside sources. Um, I think the uh, Billy Hingle and uh, uh, the gentleman to my right here, Mr. Wagner. Wagner. Yeah. <laughs> I saw your name today. Um, you know, we, we need to take a little more time, take a deep breath, take a step back, and try to do this uh, with all the committees that are potentially involved. And I think if you do that, if you notice in the past, if we had joint efforts with committees, generally things went through on the county board floor because you have a lot of people involved with a lot of different ideas and good ideas. And I, and nothing against the additional committee at all. I, I'm glad in a way you brought it up to the floor, but I think it's uh, not the best way to do business and that's just the way I feel. And, and I think our staff is going to get involved with additional work too, which they don't have adequate staff to do. So I, I'm against this thing from, from a lot of different standpoints. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Supervisor Clendenning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, we had plenty of meetings on this. 
we were open for discussion. Our committee allows discussion at the time there is public comment and at the time the agenda appears on, the item appears on the agenda. Anyone of you were welcome to come to the committee. Many of you didn't. I've asked a lot of you to participation. There's where you could have participated. I think delaying this is just the people that want to vote against this, go ahead. You're going to have a resolution or a, uh, probably a ordinance coming before you. If you don't like it, you don't have to vote for it. But I think you're scared of it. That's what I think you are. I'm voting in favor of it, and I hope the rest do too. Supervisor Lightman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. The very fact that we've talked about this for 30, 40 minutes, the fact that the uh, room is packed, says nobody's willing to get their butts off the dead center and do something. Why wait? I say the time is now. I'm voting for this. Any further discussion from supervisors? Seeing none. That resolution does pass 10 to 7, and we will look forward to seeing this come back in August of 2015. Mr. Chairman, oh, you don't get that, you get this. Thank you, and thank you, everybody, for your input on that. Okay, page, page 120 in the packet. Uh, this is the Highway Infrastructure and Recreation Committee of June 4th, as well as 121, 122, 123, 124, and 5. We have various park construction supervisors, we're starting with the park construction supervisor report, and through their various reports on pages 126 through 129. 126 through 129. We have the ADRC minutes from April 9th on 130, 31. We have their minutes uh, from the Finance Committee on 132 and 133. The Fairgrounds Commission minutes of May 20th on 130. Supervisor Clinton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the Fairgrounds Commission, um, minutes. Uh, I see that they're going to do something about the problem that's up there and they're going to go through the hire a consultant or a auditor to do an audit and, and that's going to be hired by the city of Marshfield and also the county, Wood County. Can somebody elaborate on that? What, what, who, who's going to do that? Yeah. And who has been contacted or? Supervisor Ashback. Well, we, last meeting we were talking about having this audit because uh, it was a request for it from the outside and a few other items come up, so. I don't believe the county is going to get involved with all of the pay, and if I'm concerned, I think it's, as far as I know, it's just going to be the city of Marshfield, but I have, I can't really uh, say yes or no on that, so. But on another subject, the round barn, we have that almost is half done, com two sides are completely done, and the other two sides are pretty well done, so in about a week's time, that should be finished, and it looks, it looks uh, beautiful, what's been, people will know the place when they go on it, so. Yeah, and as far as the commission, we're going to be meeting next Wednesday, and there was a question when we got this big loan, where we're going to go with the money, and we decided to put half of it in the, in the bank, in the River City Bank here in Rapids, and, and the other half in Marshfield, and all the time is needed for the Round Barn to take the money from the Wisconsin Rapids Bank and transfer it to Marshfield, because there'll be better, very little bit left after we pay for the Round Barn, so. We're running about $175,000, $180,000 project there, but 
We had to take all the concrete out and take the mud out and put a lot of, put a sand in there in order to do a good job and put some drain tile around the outside walls to uh, make sure that dry over winter that it doesn't affect the concrete that it stays dry underneath. It should last that much longer. And Marble Construction do an excellent job. It's, it's really a good contractor on this. So the fairgrounds looks pretty good now, and I just hope between the two committees and financing that we can keep it going because we, we got it looking now like we can be proud of the place, and we just hope we can keep the fire running financially to make things work out. Okay, thanks. Supervisor Wagner. I can't get used. Supervisor Wagner, can I get you to comment on the reason for the audit or the thought of that? I know you don't want to. No, I, you're, you're right, I don't. But, but, but Supervisor Wagner has been there from the start on this. Uh, I've attended some of the meetings, but not as many as he has, and he has a much better feel as to why the thought process, or at least the thought process. When we actually didn't ask for, for um, an audit, we, we asked that. Um, when, when I was uh, initially appointed to the uh, commission, um, I had advice on, uh, from my family legal counsel, not county legal counsel, not city legal counsel, but family legal counsel, that if this was a separate body politic, that I might be liable uh, for any irregularities that might have taken place financially within that, within that organization. And uh, so before I took the, I, I said before I took the seat and accepted the seat, I would like to see their articles of incorporation. I wanted to see their application for a 5013C. And I wanted to see um, uh, their uh, uh, 990s, which is their the nonprofit tax forms that were filed, and the uh, 1099s that were given to everybody else. And uh, the next thing I received was a notification that I was taken off the committee, which was interesting. Uh, I didn't receive a reply. I just received a notification that uh, somebody else was being appointed to the committee. Um, that being the case, I think there were questions raised in the commission uh, about those things, and uh, I think the chairman decided the best way to do it was that I, if I'm reading the minutes. I wasn't there. I, I think it was the chairman that decided that it was there. Mr. Curry was there. If he wants to elaborate, I'll, I'll yield the floor to him. I'll let you two decide. And if you got something, Supervisor Curry, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I won't speak for Chairman Fire. I'll, I'll give what I took out of that meeting. The last commission meeting, it, uh, the, the audit was discussed. I don't think right at this moment the commission is going to fund that. If it comes to the county or the city, uh, we'll have to see who's going to pay for it at that time. There is a reorganization effort with the commission that's ongoing. My understanding is the chairman and the new secretary, we're going to talk to the city, city attorney and corporate counsel and the finance director from both uh, agencies to, to find out the correct way forward. I don't want to say the commission has been operating illegally. That's not, I don't believe that's true, but we certainly haven't been operating the way we should have been operating. I agree with uh, Supervisor Wegg, and I think it's the intent of the chairman and the commission members to or reorganize the commission, the financial side of the commission, in the correct way, whether it's incorporating or there's other ways it's possibly to do that I, I pointed out to them, but I don't think it's uh, prudent to do that without legal and financial <coughs> information from both bodies. And that's about, we're going to meet next week again. I guess we're in the, I guess the best they can tell you is we're in the process of reorganizing how, how the Fair Commission will operate financially. Thank you. Supervisor Burnett, I'm trying to answer your question a little bit. This started a little over a year ago. Uh, we had some meetings and we, the Fair is basically a volunteer run organization. And there were some things that probably could have been done or should have been done better from a compliance standpoint that they're working on. Uh, at that point in time, some of the individuals said it's pretty hard to know where to go if we don't know where we're starting from. And there has been, to my knowledge, no request made of the county for any funds or any work. Peter, has anybody asked you to look at this from a legal perspective? Not that specific issue. Okay. So we're going down that process, but I guess at the end of the day, what we'd like to do is have a starting point. So they know where they are, they know where they need to go, and, and the goal of everybody involved was to put the fair on firm financial footing 
in a perpetuity. So that's where we're at. But no, no request yet directly made to us. Thank you. Any other questions on page 134? Central Wisconsin State Fair Board meeting minutes uh, April 20th on 135, 136, and 7. The McMillan Memorial Library Board of Trustees on April 22nd, that's 138, 139. South Central Library System minutes on 140, 141. The Director's Report on 142, 143. Minutes of the University Commission meeting of January 15th on 144. Uh, the meeting of February 26th at 145. Pages 146 through 150 are operating budgets and financial statements from them. So through 150, any Thank questions you. there? Okay. Supervisor Rosa. Thank you. Uh, we have never put these in the packet before. Can I ask why they were included this time? You know, the commission has a certain degree of autonomy, and I certainly am not opposed to transparency, but I was wondering how these documents ended up in the packet when we've yes. not been... I know that was a good check with me. They were sent to me. They were sent to me for inclusion. Okay. And that might be only because you have a, a transition of the deans or, or some other stuff okay. going on that they want. I don't know, but we can, or you can search. Yeah, I'll find out. All right. Page one, 151 in your packet, spray irrigation, uh, waste ad hoc committee minutes from May 28th, that's 151, 152, the sign-in sheet at 153 and 154, the spray manure irrigation public health concerns report on pages 155 through 171. Does anybody, that's a long report, does anybody have any, I'm sure you've all read it, does anybody have any questions on that report? Okay, seeing none there. That takes me to page 172 of the packet, and that is the resolution uh, commanding or recognizing those long-term employees for their service. And do this by a voice vote. We obviously had those recognitions earlier. All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. Hold it, hold it. Back up. I'm getting out of here too. Let's have a motion. Yeah. First. Yes. Yes. All right. Motion by Hamilton. Second by Barai. All right. That, that works better.
Thank you. All right, anything else that needs to come before the board? Entertain. Motion to adjourn by Supervisor Wagner, a second by Supervisor Zerfu. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.